How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Capsule Cone. I'm Matt McQueen, and it's Monday. So that means we are going to do another episode of the Monday Q&A. Ideally, I would like to do these every week, but getting the ball rolling on them has been a little bit crazy. Last week, I traveled to Ohio and Indiana, hung out with a few people up there and made some content that you're going to be seeing on the channel very soon with uh, Mike and Elton from Mike's Music Production in Cincinnati. And then, of course, was in Kokomo, Indiana on Tuesday and then uh, was back in the studio Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, have my friend Nate Washburn up here tracking some drums with um, Isaiah from the band Phineas. So busy, busy week. Last week did not get a Monday Q&A up, but uh, today's is going to happen, even though it's not going to happen until probably about four o'clock and I'm filming this right at two and then going to roll it out. But I wanted to take time to answer a few of your questions. So today we got three questions. The first one comes from the ultimate compressor of all time. Why doesn't this plugin exist? And uh, if you uh, aren't familiar with that compressor, it's the Spectrasonics 610 Comp Limiter. And I did that video with my friend Trevor playing some acoustic guitar. And uh, the question was from Meta Cookie. The inevitable question would be, what is the closest thing in the box? Some sort of transparent limiter. And that's just the point is that there, you know, I, I haven't found anything in the box that does what that compressor does for me when I use it on acoustic guitar. So if you haven't watched that video already, I'll put it up here. You can, you can hit that little card and you can go and watch that video, but there's nothing for me in the box that does what that compressor does. And sometimes when I'm doing acoustic guitars, mixing acoustic guitars, you know, I'll use another compressor when I get to the mix phase, but I'm almost always tracking with the Spectrasonics with the 610. It just does a really, really beautiful sounding thing. The acoustic guitars sound almost finished from the moment that you track them. And with just a little bit of EQ, a lot of times I can get them to sit the way that I want them to in the mix. It just shaves off the transient in just the right way. Those really spiky peaks that an acoustic guitar has. And uh, there's lots of other things that you can use the 610 for. So go watch the video. We talk about it all there and talk about a couple of different producers that have used it. But it's a fantastic piece of equipment and they're just for me, there just is nothing that does what I use it for on acoustic guitars in the box. All right, next question. Do you have any tutorials on how you made your rolling sound panels? And that's from producing a country song start to finish part one, recording a great scratch track. You can go and check that video out up here in the top. But um, no, I don't have any tutorials on that. I should make one. I'll briefly describe it while I answer this question. It was not very difficult. Uh, we essentially just took an eight foot by four foot sheet of plywood and then we framed it in with one by sixes. So there are one by sixes just on the outside edges of an eight foot by four foot sheet of plywood. And then we put a layer of drywall inside of that. Actually, the drywall may have been, you know, just laying on top of and we glued it down to the plywood and then we framed it in with the one by sixes. And then after we had the drywall for just extra density glued to the plywood, we stuffed it with four inches of R80 Roxul, which is like a fiberboard, sort of like, you know, you'd hear people talk about Owens Corning 703. We stuffed that into there and then we covered it with fabric and we trimmed it out. And then we ended up making a couple of triangle pieces for the wheels and the wheel bases and attaching that to the side with some two by fours and some wood glue and some big screws. And we put handles on the side and we just roll them around to wherever we need them when we need some isolation. Since we built those ones that are in that video, we ended up buying a few more from a studio that went out of business that are even bigger and even heavier than the ones that we made and they work even better. But I have no idea how those ones were constructed because we bought them already built. But the ones that are in the video, the ones we use in the video, that is how we did it. Just very, very simple construction of essentially making a, uh, a box with the back and four sides and then no front. And it's just stuffing the, the, the four inches of insulation. That's what really does it. And, um, and then just putting some fabric over top of it, trimming it out. All right, so last question for today. Also, do you all think the Sin 50 would supply more of that low end? That is on the Synergy Amps Sin 30 BE BB module versus Friedman BE100 video that I did with my pal Nate Washburn. He has the Sin 30, which is a one channel version of the Synergy Amps. Check that video out up here in the top. And you know, 
I would like to think so. I uh, talked about it briefly in the video. You know, there's this whole philosophy of bigger transformers, bigger iron gives you a little bit bigger sound. And I think that when we shot that video, we used the power amp of the BE100 and ran the module into that at sort of the end of the video. And it seemed to make a bigger difference in the amount of low end that we were able to get out of the module itself. They sound very, very close. Honestly, it sounds really, really close. We never were able to, if you haven't seen that video, we never were able to get the Synergy module to sound exactly, exactly like the Friedman, but they were close enough that, you know, it was almost like, you know, in certain situations, we preferred the Synergy module and it just definitely does the thing that the BE100 does, which is right here behind me. It's my favorite guitar amplifier that I own. And uh, so to have Nate bring in the Synergy head with the Synergy Friedman module, the BBBE, it was it was sort of eye-opening to me that like, man, this is a really, really cool thing. And I think that if I didn't have this big space and I was producing in a home studio or a bedroom studio, something like that, or doing some of the stuff that Nate does on the road, I definitely would want to have one of those Synergy amps and a batch of modules because it just sounded really, really good. So. That's pretty much it. All the applicable links are in the cards and also in the description box below. If you want to go and watch any of those videos, hit them up. And uh, if you've got questions or comments, leave them below on this video or in the videos that you watch on the channel. Until next time, I've been Matt. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.